Hey guys, just getting started. Um, I don't know if anyone is here, but I figure I'll get it started, get it going. We're working on Corgi Nights. Just figured my partner's upstairs doing D&D, &D, so I will, you know, do my own thing. Um, so it's Saturday, March 14th. If you don't already know, I mean, you probably know if you're, if you're watching it, this, um, and I am just figured Currently, my partner is upstairs doing, working D &D. on one of the older, so I will 1.0 dreamer designs. And this is... Corgi Nights, and I'm having a good time doing it, um, and I figured I would just, you know, go live today, see if I can, you know, cheer myself up a little bit, um, and we'll talk more about that if we get some actual people in here. And you guys just have to excuse me if anyone is in here. Um, doesn't look like it yet. So I'm just hosting a couple places. Let's see. And okay. Okay, sorry, I'm, all right. Well, we shall just get to work, I guess, and we will see if we get any, any bites. Um, I know a lot of people might be out stocking up for possible quarantines. I know we're, we're, we're probably gonna go shopping today. But, you know, and it's a little early for some of us. Oh, also, if you guys can hear that thing in the background, just ignore it. That is my cleaner for my CPAP machine. Um, I, a couple years ago, I don't know, I have allergies, so, um, when you have allergies, you have to clean your CPAP machine, like deep clean it a lot more often than you normally do. Because normally you like, you know, you wash your mask like once a day, you, you know, clean everything else like once a week. But when you have allergies, because, you know, stuff gets in there, you're supposed to like do like a full clean of it. Like supposed to quote unquote, like pretty much every day. 
Um, you're supposed to be like, you know, disinfecting the whole system every day. So there's this cleaning thing called the um, So Clean. And I found out you could use an HSA, which is like a health savings account. Um, if you don't know what that is, you can use money from your HSA to buy it. So I had some HSA money saved up because it's, it's quite expensive. I mean, it's not cheap. And I purchased one with my HSA money and it's the best purchase I've ever made because basically you, um, it's like a chamber that you put your mask and straps and everything in and then the tube like permanently connects, not permanently, but like, you know, it like permanently connects into the semi permanently connects into the, the CPAP chamber itself. And then it uses like, like ozone or I don't know, some kind of pumped, um, like ionized air oxygen type deal to disinfect the whole, the full system. So I can go back to actually like just, you know, cleaning the residue off the mask and then only having to clean, you know, the full system like every couple of weeks to get residue off of it rather than needing to fully disinfect it constantly to keep myself from getting sick. And it has been really awesome. Okay, so yeah, um, I guess I am just going to ramble for a bit while we see if we get any viewers. So I know it's been a while guys. Um, I know I got one video uploaded earlier this week, but, um, it's, it's been rough. Uh, I know I, f I feel like I say that a lot, but I'm just being honest here. Um, and currently we are working on switching my med. I'm working on switching, you know, meds with my doctor to try to make it, you know, less rough. And, um, oh my God, guys, that is kicking my butt. It is truly, truly kicking my butt. Like, um, I don't know if any of you guys um, have ever been on a medication that gives you like actual withdrawal symptoms, but the med that I am, I am going off of because I was on the highest dose already, um, 
definitely is notorious for having withdrawal symptoms. Like it's the kind of thing, like if you forget doses, like you will feel it, um, like physically not, you know, it's, it is a depression medication, but like you don't necessarily get the depression stuff right away but like you'll feel it physically and so um they started you know titrating me down like three weeks ago and I made it through like the first two you know step downs with you know no noticeable symptoms like if there were symptoms I did not feel them and then this week, literally, like probably Sunday, I didn't, I didn't notice anything that would have been the first day that I went down to the lowest dose before, you know, this next week I'm, I'm done with it. But so Sunday I go down to that dose, don't notice anything. Monday, I walk around a corner at work and get a brain zap because that's like the most, the most noticeable symptom or these brain zaps and it's just kind of gone downhill from there. <laughs> um, I mean, I can kind of laugh about it right now cause I don't have to like try to get up to go to work. You know, I'm, I'm just here relaxing diamond painting. Um, definitely doubling down on diamond painting right now because you know, this is more of a like, I don't know how to describe it, but this kind of, uh, you know, sadness, like just definitely diamond painting is helping a little bit more than it, it was before, which is, you know, before diamond painting is, was getting a little bit like, eh, and I wasn't really like having as much fun with it, but right now it's definitely like feeling more of my jam. So I'm just kind of rolling with it. Um, I basically though have decided that I'm going to just try to enjoy my time off work as, as much as possible because right now it's just really hard to enjoy my time to, to even get through my time at work. Um, and I just keep telling myself, you know, like it's temporary. Um, I just need to remember that I'm going to get through this push, you know, not, not necessarily push through, but like we're making the medication change because I need to, and this too shall pass. And I knew it was going to be a little rough. I just didn't remember how rough emotionally it was going to be. So, you know, there's, there's that. So, you know, it's, it's just been rough. I definitely, um, I'm having that, you know, whole like, oh, wow, that I can't get out of bed feeling <laughs> is back. Um, and like I said, I can, I can kind of smile and talk about it now, but um, definitely wasn't how I felt yesterday morning when I was trying to wake up. Um, and if you've ever, you know, if you've ever dealt with depression, you kind of know what I mean, but, um, you know, you, you just kind of have to go with it. Um, I'm not to the point where like, I'm worried yet. And I know that this is a symptom of the change that we consciously decided to make. So I'm not concerned necessarily. I'm just more frustrated that it has to happen. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what's going on this week. I figured with all that, I would do a live stream, see if, you know, I can kind of boost myself a little bit, chat with you guys, work on my painting, 
live and see if that motivates me to edit some videos this week because I do have a bunch of videos that are like ready to be edited and uploaded that I filmed like probably a month ago. Um, but I just haven't gotten done because of reasons. A lot of it too is just that I don't have a lot of time outside of work. So like when I get home, you know, a lot of times I just want to, you know, kind of veg out and, you know, play a video game or sometimes I literally just eat dinner and come downstairs and go to sleep. But I think, I think a lot of us feel that, that, you know, the capitalist hellscape we're living in. All right, looks like I am done with this color for the moment. Um, so yeah, speaking of capitalist hellscapes, how about that coronavirus? Hope everybody's staying safe and doing their social distancing. YouTube lives are great for that. We can still be social while um, not exposing ourselves. Um, right now, Montana only has four, four presumed positive tests. Um, we say that because uh, they haven't been confirmed by the CDC yet. Because I guess, like, if it's not tested directly by the CDC, it's not like a completely confirmed positive case. I don't know exactly how the whole thing works. I'm only keeping track of it a little bit to try to make sure that I'm not getting misinformation. Because the amount of stuff that's floating around Facebook that's misinformation is incredible. Like I saw one the other day that said that it had like a way lower contagion factor than SARS, but so far it seems to have the same, approximately the same contagion, fa contagion factor as SARS. So, you know, you just can't really trust a lot of stuff that's going around. On the other hand though, like the fact that so many people who get it don't seem to show symptoms or, you know, they do while they're, they don't show symptoms till they've already been contagious for a while is a huge issue. So, you know, but like I said, we're not doing too bad here in Montana so far and knock on wood, hopefully we won't do too bad in the future. Um, I got my Diamond Art Club pen and I promptly stuck a four placer in it. Whoops, I forget where my camera is because I have a light. <laughs> but um, back to using a four placer and I am loving it just like I remember loving it. And I'm a little sad that it took me so long, but you know, I got, I've got a stock of four placers now and I'm feeling like I'm in a place where I can use them. And also I might, you know, I mean, we'll see, but I might be in a spot where I won't wear them out as fast. Eh, I don't know though. I say that, but I've only been using this four placer one day and you can already see some wear around the edge. So I don't know, but, um, I still love them. They are fun to use. Let's see, where can I stick this? Stick it right there. Okay. Have to excuse my, uh,
excuse my everything. My, my desk is kind of a little bit of a cramped mess right now. So, um, I have a Dreamer Designs 2.0 canvas that I did unbox and film a video on, but I have obviously not uploaded anything yet for, and it's kind of like too big for me to work on in this area because I got, um, Reverie, which is like, oh God, guys, it's huge. It's like, um, mm, 75 by like 60 you know what I'll just go check but it's pretty big um it's the only one that I really felt like I had to have which is a good thing I mean if we're being honest it's a good thing um I don't need more canvases um 75 by 60. Yep. It's really pretty, but I don't need more canvases. I, I, I just don't. That's, that's the fact of the matter is. Um, and I also don't need to be spending money, even though it is bonus time. I just got my bonus at work. Um, and you know, we, it's almost tax time. I'm going to be tax, tax rich soon. Just kidding. I'm never going to be rich. But, um, we do be having refunds coming. Okay, let's see. My God, I keep finding these ones that have just... slipped up on in here. Also, like, a, and apparently a random red rhinestone. That just got away from me. Oh, well. Whatever. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out. Um, so, yeah. Um, I don't need to be buying more diamond paintings. I mean, I've got, it's probably up to like 115 by now. I haven't done like a count yet lately in my book. Um, I try to keep only like two in progress at any given time, but technically my, my sneaky cat is still currently in progress. It's just kind of dozing. It's, it's in hibernation, we'll say. But once I finish my, my mystery diamond painting at work, I think I'm taking Sneaky Cat in to finish that up because I have a much bigger workspace there. So I tend to take my bigger ones there since I can, you know, set things up and not have to worry as much um, about small spaces. But then again, I mean, we might be working from home here pretty soon. They did go around and start asking if people have internet at home. I mean, I know I said I'm not particularly worried, but you know, they 
start taking those precautions and I'll be even less worried. So, you know, we'll see. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about? So this painting only had, let's see, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 colors, which feels like not very many, but it's actually turning out pretty good. So, you know, it probably will be okay. Um, and as always, I mean, Dreamer Designs really has it on point with their drills. So even with fewer colors, I really enjoy working on it. And um, the 2.0 canvas guys, really, really nice. And they've expanded colors and just made it like really, really nice. So I'm pretty impressed. Um, I still stand by like, I think some of the like luxurious touches they've added are a little bit excessive, but you know, if that's your jam, then go for it. You'll see my full chat about it when I do finally get my video uploaded and edited. I don't even have that one like downloaded to my computer yet because my, my phone for some reason doesn't like to hook up to my computer. So I actually have to download it to my partner's computer and then he puts it on our house network and then I pull it from there onto my computer because for some reason we also can't get our computers to talk to each other through the house network. Um, we used to be able to, but I don't know, his dad did something with the firewalls and the sharing and it's not easy anymore. So we just put it in our shared movie drive that we have as a house and I pull it off there, but I have to like get him to, you know, uh, get around to downloading it for me. And sometimes that takes a while because he'll like, you know, pitch a fit about it and just be like, oh, you make me do everything. And like, not in like a, you know, like a serious way, but like definitely in a like, oh, I don't really want to do this kind of way. So it, it is a little bit of a pain <laughs> to get him to do stuff. Got a little bit of little well, crumb. Uh, whatever. Put that over here in the trash. I'm sorry if you hear that pounding, guys. I do not know what it is. plugging in my phone. Oh goodness gracious. I'm a little bit stuffy, but that's probably just allergies. Oh, excuse me. 
Ugh, okay, so if you can hear the pounding, I'm guessing that my partner is up there enjoying his game and like tapping his feet about it. Um, and I don't think he has his phone up there, so I can't really text him. And I don't know if he's signed into Steam. I can know because he's probably signed into Steam down here, so I can't really message him. So we're just going to have to live with the annoyance, I guess. I will fuss at him later. Oh, so we got a new bit mattress and actually, I mean, technically a whole new bed because we got a new bed frame and everything because our old bed frame had some, some parts that were, were breaking, but we got a new bed frame and mattress and it's a, it's a wink mattress, wink beds, W I N K. And it is really, really nice. I love it. Um, as you guys probably know, I am a fat lady. So I basically, um, like Google searched best beds for fat people. <laughs> um, now if, if you don't know, there is, uh, like a mattress made specifically for fat people to call the big fig, um, which I was thinking about, but the thing that was turning me off from that is that we are in kind of a cramped house and we cannot fit a full queen sized box spring down our stairs. So we would need something that sold like a two piece queen box spring. And they didn't sell a two piece queen box spring. Plus also like I couldn't lay on the bed. Um, so that was a big, a big downer. Um, so, you know, they were in the back of my mind, but I was like, eh, it's really not going to work for us. Cause we can't, we can't fit the box spring down. And if I'm going to get that mattress, then I would want the box spring, you know, obviously. So, um, when I really like, we got serious about it because my partner got a severance package from his previous job before he started working where I work. Um, cause his previous job, you know, closed down his division. I, you know, did that Google search and I found the wink, which I had never really, I don't know. I might've come across it before, but not enough to make an impression. And I found a few different places that had said that their plus mattress had rated, um, the best among heavy side sleepers. And by heavy, I mean like body weight. And I was like, ah, oh, that's me. <laughs> and, um, I, I need a firm mattress. I like it to feel, you know, to feel kind of soft, but it needs to be pretty firm. Like it needs to give me a lot of support. Otherwise my body like curves because I'm, you know, I'm, I am a heavier person and I just, I, I can't have that curving. It needs to be, you know, it needs to be supportive. So I did a bunch of research, you know, hemmed and hawed a little bit about it. It is one of those like bed in a box type mattresses where, you know, it comes rolled up in the box and you have to unroll it. Um, but it's like a hybrid. So it's not just memory foam, it's memory foam and inner spring. And so, you know, I did a ton of research, um, found out, you know, what it need, what it would need to, you know, keep the warranty and all that kind of stuff. And then we took the plunge and we spent the money and I bought, you know, a whole new bed frame that would, you know, cause I didn't like their bed frame cause it wasn't quite high enough. Um, which, you know, I, I now realize because the mattress is like 14 and a half inches thick, that's probably why sometimes that kind of stuff is hard to visualize, but I wanted more like under the bed storage than their mattress gives or their, their bed frame gave. So I just got like this, this one, um, really heavy duty one that Zinus makes. That's got a little bit more under bed freight storage than theirs did. And I got a bunky board um, foundation for it 
because I was a little worried about um, the, the memory foam pushing through the wires of the platform, you know, frame we got it. And um, needless to say, I fucking love this mattress. Now, my partner, who is a bit smaller than me, um, he finds it a little firm. Um, I think also in general, he doesn't like as firm of a mattress as I do anyway, but, um, he, and I've told him he needs to tell me if he really doesn't like it, because if he really doesn't like it, he needs to tell me, because if we're going to be spending, you know, this much on a mattress, we need to make sure we have one we both like. If I need to go, if, you know, if we need to go out and get a sleep number bed or like a custom mattress or something like I am willing to do it, but so far I think he's, you know, it's broken in a little bit and he's okay with it, but we'll, we'll see. Cause we have like, you know, they give you like a 120 night trial before you're like quote unquote committed. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. Um, it was really funny taking it out of the box because, well, we got it out of the box and then, you know, they, they wrap it in like a heavy plastic wrap, basically like saran wrap type deal, um, to compress it. And so like we're unrolling it and that thing was like folded in half before they, they rolled it too. So like it not only like pops out like of the roll, but like, then it like unfolds. And that was definitely the biggest shocker for me was seeing that it was also folded. I was like, what? Um, that was, that was a long, a long Saturday though. We had to like clean the room and vacuum and like build the new bed frame, which wasn't too bad. Cause I mean, it was, it was pr mostly pre-built, but it, it took a lot out of us. I'm really hoping that my headache goes away soon. Um, one of the definite side effects I've been noticing from the, um, the med down titration or whatever, um, you would call it, but basically, you know, definitely getting headaches from, from going down from the med. Um, I took an ibupro some ibuprofen before I started streaming. So I'm hoping that that kicks in. Pardon the light shuffle. I'm hoping that kicks in soon because um, I'm not really having a fun time right now um, with a headache. And it would be nice if it just, you know, went away. trying to think of other stuff that's like fun. Uh, let's see. I mean, I already kind of mentioned it, but this week was not only payday, but bonus week at work. So we got our bonuses, um, our yearly bonuses. And I can't remember if it's more or less than last year. Um, but it was pretty good. Um, we did we flirted with doing a quarterly bonus incentive last year and it, um, like most people liked the idea. However, it ended up being way too much work, um, for the administration, um, because they had to like do all this extra work to make sure that everything was correct. And it was just like way too much. And maybe if they had like, 
you know, a full team of people dedicated to that. And it wasn't just like piled on of the people that, you know, have other stuff to do, then maybe it would be doable, but currently no, not doable. So they went back to the normal thing. So the bonus I would have gotten was like minus the bonus I got in uh, like November, but it was still pretty hefty. So I don't know what I'm probably going to, well, I, I know I got to pay the rest of my credit card. Um, but then I don't know, I'll probably put the rest on my car payment. like a responsible adult instead of treating myself like a child. I mean, I say that, but I don't know what I'm actually going to do. I should put it on car payments, but what I actually want to do is splurge on something. I just don't know what. Cause it's not like I, you know, I don't want a lot of like really fancy stuff and most of the semi expensive stuff I can already kind of afford most of the time. So I don't tend to deprive myself. And if I can't afford it at the time, usually I either save up or I figure out I don't actually want it by time I get it, <laughs> by the time I could afford it. So I don't know. We will see. Um, but I guess I could just dip it all into savings and call that good. The like the extra responsible adult who does things like socks away all her extra money. That one did not go as planned. I should probably for like these ones that I'm doing impromptu without like viewers that I'm should not knowing for sure are going to show up. I should probably like get a tag or something um, set up, but I don't know. Those are hard to do while you're diamond painting. I feel, but maybe that's just me. I also really love rambling talking. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know guys, leave a comment if you have ideas for what you would want me to do during a live. I can always talk about Bob's Burgers. Um, they've been putting up new episodes again, which I'm really happy with. Um, most of them have been pretty good. Uh, the most recent one I think was where Gail was teaching an art class in a yurt and Tina went because she really wanted to go and learn how to draw horses better. And Linda went because she wanted to support her sister because she's a mom and it was cute. And the, the person that was there like had like a snarky review blog. And Linda totally thought that that's what she was going to do is she was going to snarky review 
gills. Frankly, terrible. Um, workshop, but it turns out the lady was there sincerely. So funny. And then, you know, the side plot with Bob and the, and the other kids was that they were, there was a cat that a reward was being offered for and Louise wanted the reward. And then they found the, the cat, but it wasn't the cat. You know, pretty, pretty classic Belcher shenanigans. Oh man. So, um, my partner and I went out to dinner. Hi, Melody. Uh, my partner and I went out to dinner the other night and, um, the, the, one of the things I really enjoy about, and, and I hope to God, this doesn't sound like, um, God, how do I put it? Like pretentious. Um, but one of the things I really like about like my relationship with him is that sometimes we, um, like can talk about like, you know, like stories. Um, and he brings up the Edgar Allan Poe story, the mask of the red death, which it's been a grip since I have read that. Like, I mean, I didn't even remember which one that was until he reminded me that it's like about, um, like a plague where basically the rich people are like holding themselves up with like parties where they're like quarantine parties where they're like all safe while everybody else is dying. And, you know, he was saying how like this whole, like, Oh, I'm doing great melody. How about you? I shouldn't say I'm great, but I'm like hanging in there and I feel better this weekend now that I don't have to be at work. <laughs> But like how, you know, like people can quarantine themselves, um, when they can afford it. And it was like, uh, kind of blew my mind. And I was just like, man, I love that. Like, that's part of our relationship that we just like t talk about that kind of shit. But yeah, I was telling everybody earlier that I'm, um, I'm going through like a, a med change. So like, I'm a little bit getting my ass kicked by that med change, but like the weekend is definitely helping because, <laughs> um, when I have to get up and go to work in the morning, that just makes things worse. And I apologize if I seem scattered, um, cause I've just been rambling to myself for most of this time. So I'm glad that you're here. Melody. <laughs> Oh, nice. I love that painting, but I haven't got it yet. <laughs> like there's just too many. So I have to like really limit myself as to which ones that I do get. And, um, I was, I was saying earlier after I finish this painting and my one that I have at work, I think I'm going to finally finish my sneaky cat. Um, because it's been kind of snoozing for a few months now. And I like to work on my bigger ones at work anyway, cause I have like more space there. So assuming they don't make us go work from home for who knows how long I will take it to work with me after I finish the, the mystery ever moment that I'm working there on there. Yeah, there's so many. It's crazy. My partner is constantly like telling me like, you have too many diamond paintings. We should get rid of some. And I'm like, but I can't like, I want to do them all. 
and we haven't quite gotten to stash acquired beyond life expectation yet, but you know, like I definitely do. I mean, I admit I have too many, but like I could still do them all. I'll probably at some point here go through and see if there's any like ones that I really don't want and maybe do like a giveaway or see if any of my local friends want them. But you know, they're most of them. I still really like, um, so I don't know. We'll see. I got excited yesterday because one of my friends at work said they had ordered from ever moment. And I think she might have ordered like from a store that just tagged themselves as ever moment because ever moment's not open again yet. And I was like, oh, dang it. But I also didn't want to like spoil her parade. So I didn't say anything to her. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's a decent enough quality when she gets it. Oh yeah. I always have two going cause I've got my one at work and my one here and my one at work is usually a bigger one. And then I try to do like a smaller one here. This one's 40 by 50. Yeah. Yeah, this one's 40 by 50 and, um, I mean, I could technically, if I wanted to be, you know, annoyed, do a bigger one in my desk here, but like my workspace is just so small that I like to keep it around this size or smaller. I could probably do like one of the, the Mandy Manzano princesses pretty easily. I've got so many I want, I need to give away, but I try to make sure that like ever since the, the Victoria's moon one that I still need to film a final review for, but ever since that one where I just really didn't want to work on it, even though it turned out great, like it looks fine. Um, like I'm really trying to make sure that even when I'm making ones as gifts, it's one that I want to work on because <laughs> that one, like, killed me. Oh my God. But this one, I actually, cause I actually like working on dreamer designs paintings, no matter what they are. So this one, literally, I was just like, all right, well, I don't even know which dreamer design is in this box, this dreamer designs box that I have above my desk. Cause I have like a, um, you know, like a, a, a hutch over my desk. So I'll just pull it down and that's the next one I'll do. And that's what I did and I'm enjoying it. And it actually turned out good cause it's only 18 colors. So it wasn't hard to kit up. And I kitted it up with like pouring the things into dryer sheets. So the, the static wasn't as much of an issue. And it's been, it's been really enjoyable, like a nice relaxing thing to come home to like these nice square drills. And I kind of like, I wish dreamer designs would branch out some more. Like I, I say that even though they just released like 50 plus, well, 50 new designs, but like, ah, uh, one, like it, one of them appealed to me. Like I didn't need, now I can't remember what I was trying to grab. What I was, I, I had, there was something I needed to grab and now I, all right, well, I'll just go back to doing this and see if I can remember. I hate when my, my brain glitches out and I can't remember what I needed. All right. I found some X symbols that I missed.
Oh, nice. I don't have any, like, like, I don't know. I'm not really into Easter. The thing I like about Easter is Lent because all the places have more fish stuff, more like fish dishes to eat. So I like what comes before Easter. <laughs> And also the candy, I guess. Like, I like um, that there's Starburst jelly beans everywhere. But there are, like, some, some pretty, like, cute things. Like, I've seen some cute, like, Easter-themed diamond paintings. So, just they're not my my style, so I haven't gotten any. But uh, some of the ones I've been seeing people work on, I've been like, oh, that's pretty cute. I don't like any of the like Eastery ones um, for me, but I do like them. Like for the most part, there's really only been a few diamond art clubs that I didn't like. And actually like to, I, now that I think about it, I actually do have like some flowery diamond art clubs that you could kind of say were Easter themed if you were being really broad with it. Like if you're going like kind of saying like a spring theme, I've got a few that would fit that bill. But I think after I do this one here at home, I'm probably, I don't know, I might start on that, like, is it make a wish, take a bite? I can't remember, but it's that, that, um, that really nice Mandy Manzano that came out in the beginning of February. That's like a snow white looking one with a scene in her dress. Oh, excuse me. Because I really, I really like that one. Oh, nice. I haven't ordered from them, but they're on my list. I do too. I was a little worried when I saw that this only had 18 colors. I was like, is this really going to work? Um, and that's even after, I mean, I've seen the pictures of it finished and thought it looked great, but you know, sometimes, you know, you just, you start working on a painting and you're like, eh, I don't know, but it's turning out really good. So I'm happy. Like, you know, it's just that thing sometimes where you start on a diamond painting and you can't tell right away, like, is this working the right way? And it is. So I'm really glad it's turning out so nice. And Dreamer Designs is always like their drills are just so nice to work with. Um, and this, this canvas, I'm not having too hard of a time with the, the fraying because this is one of the 1.0 ones and you know, their, their canvases did have some fraying issues on some of them. Um, I've been getting a little bit of fuzz here and there. Um, I've got one in my stash that I did an unboxing video of that is just horrendous. I'm going to have to tape the edges when I finally get to it because <laughs> it's really bad. Um, do you mean of dreamer designs or do you mean paintings total?
Oh my goodness. <coughs> I'm so sorry. The phlegm has decided it wants to clog my throat this morning. All right, let me get out my book and I will tell you. I know it's more than 44 because that was the last count that I had. All righty. Let's see here. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You get a little sneak peek at all my, here, I'll turn this so it's right side up. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, I've done two of these, so 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, I think that's going to be it. Yep, 48. So yeah, I've done 48. And this is the one I was telling you that I was going to um, probably start next for my home painting. Because it's so pretty and it's only 42 centimeters wide so it should be nice to do um but yeah so this one and my work painting that'll be 49 and 50. nice i'll have to like make a commemorative um like photo thing like this is my 50th diamond painting um I think I've been doing it since probably it's probably been like a year now that I've been doing it that seems about right um not all of them um I have like a big portfolio that I keep them in before I'm like uh, before I like figure out what to do with them. Um, I framed two so far to give as gifts and I have frames ready for a few of them. Um, like, um, cause like, for example, the, the Lisa Frank, uh, leopard cheetah, whatever his name is Hunter. Um, anyway, he, uh, he pops a bit because the, the company that I ordered from um, is not super great and it's a square that pops. 
So for that one, I've got like a frame ready to go. I just haven't actually got him in the frame yet. Um, and you know, there's some others that I'm planning to frame just because I like them. Good morning, Tia. But yeah, like there's like the really nice ones I like to, I want to frame. Um, but you know, I have, I have like a Facebook album that I keep where I'm like, Hey guys, if you want this diamond painting, nobody has spoken for it. So like you can have it. So I have definitely like given a couple away just to people. Um, someone at work, I gave, I gave the, um, the lover stroll painting to because they thought it looked really good. So I was like, here, you can just have it. Like, for real. Yeah, I got that idea for the book from um, Paul and Shannon's life, Shannon on, on that channel. And I don't know if they still post videos, but she was doing diamond painting for a minute. And um, she just had like a traveler's notebook that she just literally just stuck pictures of each painting in. And that's all I do is I just stick the pictures in there and write down what size they are and whether they're square, round, or special drill and just roll with it. And it is so nice and simple. And that way also, like, if I don't know which one I want to work on next, I can just flip through the book. So I highly, I mean, I know some people want more info, like they want to know how much did I spend it on, spend on it? Where did I buy it? That kind of stuff. But if you just want like a really quick visual, you know, thing of where to put, where, you know, your paintings, like what, what all you've got in your stash, it's really great, quick and dirty way to keep track. Awesome. Yeah, I have a, I have a video, um, where I kind of just like run through how I do it. And I've been meaning to upload like an, to do an updated video. Cause I kind of put it in like a nicer notebook and stuff, but it's, it's pretty nice. And you can buy like, um, full sheet, like, uh, it's, it's really packing label paper. But I just buy like this like sticker paper from from Amazon and it's basically just like a full sheet packing label and I just print it right on that and I have that um, HP instant ink so I don't have to worry about you know like if I'm gonna run out of ink or anything. It's just like a subscription service for ink but I also print like a lot of stuff so that doesn't work as much if you're not like printing as much as I am but that, that's also great if you're printing a lot. What did I? Oh, I think that's fine. Just put that back in there. Also, so I got my um, because I'm a Diamond Art Club Diamond member, and I ended up ordering two pens because I couldn't decide between the pink one and the sparkly blue one, and they are so much prettier in real life. Like I cannot get over it. Um, I now officially have too many of the acrylic pens, but I, I, I love them. And like, there's more that I want to order from, 
from Etsy. <laughs> and I already have too many. You really only need one or two. Like, maybe three at the top if you want to put, like, a straightener on the end of one, which I have done at work. And here I am, like, like, looking at mermaid tail ones on Etsy and just... Oh well, that's that's the life of a collector, I guess. Oh gosh, I am so sorry guys. I sound really gross all of a sudden. No, they're so they're so nice and I loved too that these um the diamond art club ones came with like the empty slot without the one like pre-slotted in there because it made it easier for me to like you know see how to pop things in and out and so that was really really kind of nice like I know that's not like the weirdest thing or anything but it was kind of cool to be able to just like pull out my four placer and just pop it in there. Oh, I don't have a Facebook page. I just have like my personal Facebook. Oh, unless that's what you meant. I can link it. I don't know if it'll let you see it, though. Let me see. Because it might only let people who are like, oops, my friends see it. But if it lets you, you can go ahead and request me as a friend. Oh my goodness. Sometimes I wish I could be like as carefree as my cat. He's just over like on the bed. Like enjoying being a cat basically. Um, we got him this automatic like feeding bowl. It's, it's like a circle that's divided into five sections and the bowl just turns so that like the, it exposes a new section, you know, as a timer, you know, on a timer. 
and um, because when my partner started working where I work, having us be gone um, for like a good chunk of the day was driving my cat crazy and we would get home and he would just be like beside himself like freaking out because like nobody fed me I'm so hungry all day like I'm never going to be fed again and then you know in the morning when we would feed him and in the night when we would feed him because like he wasn't starving obviously like we were feeding him but he would be like so anxious that he was never going to get food again that he would just like gobble the whole food down and then you know throw it up so I ended up getting this like timed feeding dish so we could just put like five small meals all through the day. Ooh, I'm excited, Tia. I'd love to see that one. Um, so we get him this this food this feeding dish. I <laughs> not very often, but I'm gonna try to do it more to see if that like helps me feel better on the weekends. Um my partner usually does D and D on Saturdays. So, and I need to take a look and see when Rachel Ray usually does her live on Saturday. Cause I don't want to interfere with hers, but, um, once I figure out when that is, I'm probably going to try to do like a regular live on Saturday mornings. Cause my partner is plays D and D from, for like four hours every Saturday morning. And this is mountain time cause we're in Montana. So, um, I'm going to try to start doing it like a once a week thing. But like I said, I need to make sure I'm not, um, cutting in on Rachel Ray's time. Not because I'm taking viewers away from her, but, um, I just don't want to cut in on that time. So, <laughs> um, cause obviously nobody's like coming to watch me instead of Rachel Ray. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. I have one Chuck Pinson. I got that, that, um, space for reflection, the, the kind of fall one with the, the like mountain scene. Cause, um, that's what really the only one that's my style. I, like I said, there's a lot of stuff I like, but just isn't my, my jam. So that's kind of where we, <laughs> where we are with Chuck Pinson. Like I like a lot of his stuff, but it's not like something that I would personally do. But that fall one, I really like space for reflection. That one was really nice. So I got that one. And that one, um, extra funny about that one, because when I first ordered it, um, it sold out like, like DAC oversold it. And so I got an email that was like, oh, you know, the last one that was yours was damaged. <laughs> We're sorry. And they refunded me and I was like, no. <laughs> oh, cool. Where in West Virginia. If you don't mind me asking. Oh, nice, Tia. That's a pretty good stash. Sounds like somebody's a Chuck Pinson fan.
Yeah, like I um I mostly only watch the diamond painting stuff. Once in a while, like if I'm like when she's doing a live, if I'm feeling like chatting with her, then I'll go I'll go watch. That's the other thing. Selfishly, I want to watch her. So <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just want to make sure that I'm not like in the same time frame. So I got to look at that. It doesn't, I don't think she's doing one today though. Cause I know there was one yesterday for Patreons. Um, and I don't see one scheduled when I looked, but I don't know, whatever. I'm not going to worry about it today. I'll worry about it later. I know. <laughs> I'm laughing just thinking about it. Oh, his little furry corgi butt. I was really sad to see that Sagittarius galleries didn't have any more in dreamer designs this time around. And I don't know if it's because now they're exclusive to DIY moon shop or what, but if that's the case, then I'm really, really sad because I just can't afford DIY moon shop. Oh, see, I'm not a city girl. I'm, I was born in the country and I guess I'm a little bit of a city girl. I like to be like close to a city, but not like in a city or like in a big city. I will, I'm like a small city person. That's, that's me. But, um, Most of what I do know about West Virginia is from my roommate in college that transferred from WVU to Cornell sophomore year. And then the McElroy brothers who are from Huntington. <laughs> and those are my two reference points because I'm originally from upstate New York. And like, that's where I was born and raised was, was the boonies of, of Northern New York, practically Canada. Which is what I have to tell people. Cause even if you say upstate New York, that usually just means like anything North of Long Island, Long Island with the hard G. I used to get so mad about how everybody just assumed you meant New York City when you said New York. And now I'm just like, eh, whatever. Like, um, it's actually like, uh, I can't believe it, but it's like actually worse. Like the, the assumptions people have about Montana, which is so funny. Um, like I literally sometimes run into people who assume that Montana like still gets around by horse and buggy. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I get that like we're rural, but it, like... <laughs> <laughs> also in the 21st century guys like yikes although we do still have like um you know those like what you'll see like on a movie or something where you know there's like a crossroads and it's like just like deserty looking not as desert but deserted and like dusty and there's just like a gas station and it's just a crossroads and there's like a, um, 
you know, like a tumbleweed. Like that's literally, I've seen that here in Montana because everything is so far apart. Well, it couldn't be that far from you, Melody, because West Virginia is not that big. <laughs> no, but I really, like, I want to go to West Virginia because it is so pretty. Like, I feel like um, it gets kind of passed over um, when people are talking about, like, you know, like, destinations and stuff. But, like... Um, just because I've looked at like, you know, looked into it and stuff because of, um, mostly because of the McElroy brothers, but a little bit because of that roommate. Um, and like, there's some really cool stuff out there and I'm just like, man, you know, there's a lot of cool, cool stuff like in all these different places that aren't like, you know, as much talked about that, you know, you just never get to find out about. But, you know, it's, there's no, I mean, there's not enough to do, like, time to do everything. Like, I haven't even been to half the crap in Montana that I want to be, I want to go to. Even in my town. Like, we have this bar that has mermaids. Oh, I work in a call center for health insurance. So I just take calls all day from providers who want to know what went wrong with their claim and sometimes I fix what went wrong with their claim and other times I tell them well you did it wrong Oh, that's really cool. We, um, I live in Great Falls, Montana, which is right on the Missouri. And, um, a lot of people here have boats that they take out. Um, and people do like, like tube floating and they'll just like float down the river and stuff like that. And I don't do that so much cause I'm not super big of an outdoors person and also I sunburn really easy but um it's super fun I mean Montana is really great for like outdoorsy stuff and um we are having like a big um like gay pride celebration here in town in June, assuming that coronavirus doesn't still have a shutdown by then. <laughs> and, um, we're going to do a big gay river float, which I'm freaking excited about. Not hundred percent sure if I'm going, 
because again, also like as a fat lady, it's a little bit awkward to like sit in a tube. Like, I don't know. I've never really found like a comfortable way to sit in a tube. <laughs> like, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Okay, there we go. Just cat hair everywhere. That is one kind of thing I miss about like upstate New York is like the different um, like environment. Like here, it's just like a different um, vibe. You know, like there's a lot less deciduous trees and everything's like more brown feeling. I mean, it's still nice, but it's not like the same vibe. And I do kind of miss it sometimes. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy here. So it's not like I'm knocking Montana. But like you can definitely feel the difference when you go back east. So I am thinking I will go for another like 27 minutes and then I'm gonna work on my shopping list because once my partner gets done with his D&D game, we got to go to the store and get some essentials. Thankfully not toilet paper because we're already stocked on that. <laughs> oh my God. Like I am all at once like amused, but also really over all the like toilet paper apocalypse memes. Like there's some really funny ones, but I'm also like so over it already. I'm just like ready for it to be over. I'm like, no, can we, can we stop? just uh, oh my god it's just crazy also like um okay so back to what I was talking about before with with the river floating oh yeah I'll, most of my family's in in New York um my uh partner his family is from here in Great Falls so after his dad got out of the military they moved back here and so um, I moved out here to live with him after I got out of college. And then um, there was some back and forth, but ultimately I ended up out here because um, it was just easier for me to move. He had a job locked down out here and everything, and I didn't. So um, I transplanted, and um, my dad and my sister still live there. Most of my mom's, I mean, like I said, most of my family's there. Some of my, um, cousins and stuff have moved around. I've got, um, one of my cousins is in the Carolinas. I can't remember if it's North or South. I've got, um, a cousin in Utah. And I think that is about it. I think everyone else is still in New York.
Oh, so back to the, the, um, the like floating, you know, like river floating when you were like float down the river thing. Um, I don't know if it's like just that I didn't grow up like close enough to a river or what, but that thing like seems like such a new idea to me. Like, I don't know if it like, maybe it's just because like we have GPS now or what, but like, that seems like such a foreign idea, like not something I ever would have done as a kid, <laughs> like, or like growing up. And then like, now it's like all the rage, like people going in an inner tube and just like lazy floating down an actual river. And I'm just like, what? Like literally people will do like weekend floating trips here where they'll like float miles down the river like to like a long way. And I'm just like, what? But you know, they'll, they'll freaking do it. And I'm just like, I don't understand. You'll go like full towns. Like, I, I just don't understand, you know, like, and then you have to have someone like, you know, pick you up or, you know, drop your car off wherever you're going to get off. Like, I just don't, oh my God. Like I can understand like a canoe trip or something. Like I've been canoeing, but floating in an inner tube, I just don't get it. But you know, it's fun for like a small distance. Most of the, like the really bad static is definitely gone from these drills, but they do stick to the tray a little bit and it's really annoying. And I'm hoping, so we're going grocery shopping today. Um, well, grocery ish. Um, we're trying that new delivery thing. Um, that a lot of places, not delivery, sorry, the, the pick grocery pickup. We're trying that for the first time. Montana's behind the time. So a lot of places have that, have had that for a while, but we've only had it for a few months. So we're going to try it today because we are overworked and it's really exhausting to go grocery shopping, but we still have to go to one of the other grocery stores. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to find like, like Clorox wipes. Oh, that's cool. I know that's like a popular place for people to go. Like if you're in like, you know, like Pennsylvania, Virginia, well, honestly, like even people in Northern New York go there. Um, and it's so funny because, um, like I remember definitely like people in my town, like thinking, okay, you know, we're, we, they would go to Florida and that'd be like, it's like a 12 hour drive, I think from where I grew up. And that would be like, you know, part of their thing is they like drive the 12 hours to get to Florida. And, you know, like that's part of the vacation. You like drive all the way through. And for us, it would be 12 hours to get to Portland. All right, let's start with black, I guess. Oh, you know what? I can. Oh my God. Apparently just knock everything down. Just, just knock all the stuff over. Why not? All right. I need. Oh my God, why? Just all over the place, everywhere fall down. Oh yeah, I love canoeing, but like I said, I'm a fat lady these days. Like, well, okay, I've always been fat. I was fat when I was born, but like, um, I don't like to do stuff like that as much anymore because I'm just sick of like, being so low in the water in a boat and stuff like that. So I just don't 
don't brave it as much, but, um, like canoeing is definitely one of my favorite, like boat related things to do. Um, I just don't, don't have the right boat. Oh my God, this, I feel like I'm having a meltdown right now. Okay. Stay. Stay. Okay. Did any other drills? They did. I knew there was one. Okay. Okay. Not this one. This one. But yeah, like that was, canoeing was like my favorite, like out on the water thing when I was like a teenager and in college. And like, I only really didn't get the opportunity to do it a lot. Cause like we never had our own canoe or anything, but you know, definitely a big fan of that. I don't like kayaking because like, um, I don't know. I just don't like how you fit and sit on the boat. I like canoeing cause you're like down in the boat and that's more my my speed but um I mean you know I haven't done that for years and I have no idea where even is a good place to canoe around here I know there are good places because people go kayaking and if you can kayak you can canoe So I'm like really enjoying working with a four placer again, but I'm really annoyed by the fact that I've been using it since last night and I can already see the signs of wear on it and I'm not even like pressing hard with it. And this is why I get frustrated with four placers. Like they're pretty awesome, but they wear out really quick. Where as a three placer, like I will use that crap for months before I start even seeing anywhere. Oh, my, um, like drills were like coming up in my fingers and I was dropping stuff and it just was like, like everything was going crazy. Everything's fine now. Um, I've calmed down and I'm back to just calm drilling. Um, but yeah, I had to open my, uh, my package of black drills and they were not cooperating. Yeah, like I love four placers. I love that they are like narrower and straighter. So you can kind of use them like a, like a straightener too. But like, oh my God, stop wearing out so quick. Like, I don't even press hard. That's what makes me mad. Maybe if I, like, pushed really hard.
so yeah. oh yeah I do the same thing and it's just like come on why me <laughs> um I haven't because I have um like really bad sensitivity to smells so I can't do anything scented so I am just completely off the paddy wax train before it even leaves the station I want to be able to have scented things but I can't and it makes my life a living hell like a few weeks ago we were at a restaurant and I had to literally ask to be moved because the person behind us was wearing cologne and it was so strong that I was like literally getting sick to my stomach um, and couldn't breathe because of my my chemical sensitivities And the horse part like for me is that like um like a lot of times like it'd be nice if I could like narrow you know narrow it down like oh it's just chemical sense or it's just you know non natural sense but you know it's n nothing so so easy to put into words <laughs> you know um like flowers do it like doesn't matter how natural it is <laughs> so yeah that's where I am there but you know I've I've had I've seen the mixed reviews on patty wax it seems to depend really heavily on what kind of climate you live in but um, I imagine that they're working on the formula too to try to mitigate the differences Oh, do they? I didn't know they had unscented. The last time I checked, they didn't have any anything that looked unscented. I'll have to go take a look. Cuz the la I mean, I'll admit the last time I looked was like pretty early on in the in the paddy wax train. But I mostly just, I mean, I have so much um, Diamond Art Club wax that mostly I just use that because it's pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Or like, um, here I go. I'm just, just diving into my scent, my scent issues. But one time, um, my, for Mother's Day, my sister-in-law got my, my mother-in-law like a, uh, yeah, that's probably what I would do or like put it in the boob oven that I've seen. I've seen people come in calling it the boob oven. Um, I've been, uh, my sister-in-law got my mother-in-law like, um, like a like a spring bulb flower basket and it had fucking paper whites in it and like the hyacinths and you know like all, basically all the smelly like spring flowers and 
So it was like sitting in our living room on top of the, the bookshelf. And I tried to tolerate it for a few days, but then the smell like started wafting down the stairs into my living space because like, you know, it was in the living room and like, I could mostly avoid the living room at that point. But then like it started coming downstairs into the bedroom and I had to ask my mother-in-law if we could just please plant it outside because it was a planter, like it was meant to go outside eventually. And she pitched a fit because like, you know, she felt like I was like attacking and like being selfish or whatever. And I'm just like, I literally can't breathe. Like, I don't know what you want from me. I tried to tolerate it. But I think it was like an emotional reaction to like feeling like now she had to tell her daughter she'd gotten her a bad gift or something. And I'm like, no, the gift is fine. Like it doesn't say on there, hey, this is heavily scented. I mean, I don't even think that the flower company tells you exactly what kind of flowers were in it. And if you're not like a horticulture person, like you might not even know that some of those are really strongly scented. So, you know, but like, uh, it was just awful. So now they, they have a, like, we don't get flowers rule. And I think that's a good rule because, you know, one year she got like Easter lilies and we have cats and those are bad for cats anyway. And like, I think that was also another part of it is like the previous year she'd gotten Easter lilies and like, those are bad for cats. And so she was like, Oh no, another year that she got something bad. And I'm just like, you know, just don't tell her. <laughs> just say, thanks. I loved it. And then <laughs> And then just throw away. Like she lives in Alabama. We're in Montana. She's never gonna know. But you know, that's that's just how the family is. I will probably have time to finish this little section of black before I say goodbye. So we shall do that. Oh yeah, no, I, um, back when I could handle smells, floral scents were definitely not my favorite. Like there were some, um, like rose scents that I, I enjoyed, you know, like some actual flowers that I liked. Um, but I always, you know, liked more, you know, citrusy and fruity stuff. And like musk, musky scents, I like those. But then, you know, once my sense, my, my chemical sensitivities started kicking in, like even the smells I like will, I mean, I will literally smell something and think, wow, that smells really good. And then my throat starts to like get itchy and tight 
And it's like, here we go. Because it just doesn't matter if I like it or not. And I think like a lot of times, um, like the people that I interact with and have to like, you know, assert my needs around don't get that. Like, you know, it's, it's not about whether or not I like the smell guys. It's like really about whether or not it affects my, my health. And I'm sorry about that. Um, and so, you know, I just don't use scented much of anything anymore. Everything's unscented. My dryer sheets, my detergent, A lotion and then the other fun thing is that like I, I just found out um like like I know you know in theory lotions have an expiration date but sometimes that expiration date's not necessarily what's listed on the bottle so like I have like I usually use O'Keefe's working hands for my hands and I had this like tube of it at work that I was using and the smell started to bother me which was really annoying because up until like a week before it started to bother me I would have told you it was completely smellless and then I finally figured out because I had a tube at home and I tried that and it didn't smell at all that oh Apparently it's just either going bad or it's like just changing because it's gotten older. So I had to throw that tube out because I was like, well, I can't use this anymore. Like it's, it's bothering me. Okay. So we are going to call it there. Um, I hope that everybody had fun watching this. It was really nice to chat with you, Melody and um, Tia and anyone else who was lurking but not chatting. I was nice to chat um, to you. <laughs> um, ooh, better get this little fuzz out of here before I before it gets stuck down. Um, made some good progress here on the corgi butt. And um, I, like I said, I'm going to try to start doing this every Saturday. Um, because my partner's busy on Saturdays and he'll be doing this. So I hope that y'all had a fun time and I will catch you later. Oh, don't forget to hit this thumbs up, thumb up, thumb up this one, this way, I think. Yeah, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to know when I'm next going live or when I upload a video. And leave a comment if you want to. I will catch you later. Bye-bye.